I have a very important video here today, and I think this can be a big one for you. The idea in today's video, I'm going to put it like this. All negativity comes in pairs, we could say. Negative thoughts are always really two negative thoughts. Okay, so that's the idea. And I'm going to try and explain that and, and explain also what you can do with this idea and how it can be helpful. So maybe you watched some of my other videos, videos, but I talk about trauma and I talk about typically a split that takes place in our psyche, in our consciousness, typically leads to two opposing mindsets that we have. Okay. And these are diametrically opposed to another one another. They don't like each other very much. Um, in terms of theory, you could say that it's we develop a, a shadow. It's all the stuff we don't want to look at, the stuff we reject about ourselves. And then there's this persona that we want to cultivate and we think is going to be acceptable to the outside world, given that there's all this stuff that we're not going to look at and we certainly wouldn't let anyone else see, right? So the mind itself, if we're, we're carrying some trauma, which in my view is a lot more people than maybe we would be comfortable to talk about. <laughs> um, the mind itself is split and therefore every kind of problem or ne experience of negativity we have kind of has two components to it. It's never one component because the mind comes with two, com two, com uh, two parts. So let me make it a bit more practical than this. Let's say you're looking at some of your negative beliefs or something and you find that, okay, what's the emotion I'm feeling here? I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling a little bit hopeless. I'm kind of looking at my past and I'm not feeling too good about myself. I feel small. I feel powerless. And what am I thinking? I'm thinking something like a universal thought would be, for instance, I'll never make enough money. Okay. Now, there's a lot of kind of feelings of smallness and unworthiness around this. So, okay, that's clearly what we need to work on, right? So we work on that. We feel into that. We start to question it a little bit. And we start to maybe even see, a, a, find a different way to look at that. Let go of the old belief. I'll never, I'll never make enough money. I'll never be good enough. Um, no one will ever want me. Any of these beliefs. And we find a new way to look at it. And, you know, that's a good thing. The only problem, though, is we've worked on one of the pair, right? One half of the issue. If we don't look at the other half also, what we're going to experience is the opposition in this, in this case, in this example, will be the, that what we just described there was very much so in the shadow. The shadow is all about the past. It's all about smallness and guilt and unworthiness. The persona is all about the future. It's all about how do you know you're in your persona? It's typically going to be any belief will start with, I, I need to, I have to, I should. It's all a, a, the solution to the problem that isn't looked at. Okay, so if I'm saying there's something wrong with me, I'm not good enough, no one will ever want me. This part of my mind over here is at the same time telling me things I need to do to fix this problem that I don't want to look at. So I have to work harder. Um, I have to do more, etc., etc. Right now, we've just in this example, we've, we've questioned and we've found a new way to look at this hopelessness feeling, this unworthiness. But now you see, even if that's a good thing, I've worked on that. Okay, I feel a bit less small, a little bit less unworthy, but now I start to feel a little bit anxious. Why am I feeling anxious? Because I haven't looked at this side of the equation yet. The question now, these beliefs that I have to go and do this and do that and be this person and achieve more here and do more there, okay? Impress this person. So what we do is when we're trying, really what I'm kind of saying here is yes, the negativity comes as a pair. We want to start looking at the problems we experience as, okay, 
there's probably going to be two elements to this, at least two elements to it, right? But just for now, let's see it as two elements. And I'm going to start questioning both of these aspects. Quick side note, quick little note on this. The, the, the shadow stuff, the unworthiness stuff needs to be really questioned deeply and let go of because it's, there's just no reality in it. The persona, it's more accurate to say, yes, we question it, but really what we're going to end up doing with this is reinterpreting it rather than letting it go. So for instance, if I'm talking about this idea of I, I, I should be more successful, if I drop that, I might go right back into depression because I kind of do want to be successful. The only problem is my definition of success over here is an unhealthy one. So when I reinterpret the persona, it's going to be much more about, yes, I do want to be successful. I can be successful. Um, it just means something a little different now, something that doesn't involve me chasing after something externally all the time. Maybe it's a little bit more heart-centered, for instance. Okay, maybe it honors what my values are a little bit more. But there's certainly no smallness in it or helplessness in it as I move towards whatever that is, that new definition. So I hope this is a useful concept. Anytime you're working on either depression or smallness or unworthiness, you can also start to look at any feelings of anxiety. Depression and anxiety are really opposite sides of the same coin. Okay, they're always kind of there together just the way the persona and the shadow are always joined. They'll always be there. The bigger the shadow, the bigger the persona, right? So if we're questioning this, this future-oriented persona that we're trying to develop, it's typically going to be working with a lot of anxiety or emptiness is another one. Another one is irritation, okay? There are others as well. But in, in the shadow, it's going to be much more about depression, smallness, unworthiness, guilt, shame, anything like that. Sometimes there can be rage in there too that we're not looking at, right? If we're, if we're repressing a lot of feelings. But it will show up as a mild irritation over here. There's a river of anger underneath that usually. But I'm getting, I'm getting off point here. The practical thing I want you to take away from this video is when you're looking at some of your emotions and you find maybe an emotion like a sadness or a disappointment or a smallness or an unworthiness, really do some work on that, but then also do a little bit of work on this other part of the equation, right? Start to see it as, okay, if I can, if I can step back from both of these aspects, I start to dissolve the trauma that led to this split. I start to come in, I'm no longer yo-yoing from shadow persona, shadow persona, feeding, feeding them both really. Now I'm stepping into a unified mindset and really that's much more about self-expression, self-acceptance, creativity even. But that's where you're living from your authentic personality, the personality you were born to be, not this fake personality that we're trying to, or somebody else's that we liked and we're trying to emulate that personality. Your personality is perfectly fine. <laughs> you know, someone had to be you and it turns out it's you. And that's a good thing, right? I was, I'm me, someone has to be David, here I am. So we're trying to step more and more into our authentic personalities all the time and to go after what it is that the heart really wants and desires for, the, for us in this life. So that's a little tip and um, keep that in the back of your mind. The next time you're doing a little bit of journaling or inquiry into an emotion or a belief that you come into contact with. And I hope that's a, Maybe a game changer. Let me know what you think, guys. And uh, as always, I'm very grateful that you're here. And I'll see you again very soon in the next video. Bye for now.